Hello and welcome to another book review. So today I'm reviewing a book uh, by an author whose work up until even a couple of months ago I didn't really know. Um, I had seen him on Instagram, uh, we have some mutual friends, um, and he's originally from Sussex in the UK but now lives in Iceland. And so I was, uh, I was really curious about what they had f in store for us. I've started working with a new publisher um, called Crossed Crow Books which is outside, uh, just based out of, um, of uh, Chicago, and uh, they approached me to ask if I would be interested in working with any of their other authors. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I had uh, Craig Spencer on my summer podcast, um, and he was a Llewellyn author, is now working for Cross or working with Cross Crow. So I looked through their list of, of, uh, of authors. I've got a couple of them coming on to my podcast. Um, and, uh, and today I have the privilege of reviewing Icelandic Plant Magic. Folk Herbalism of the North by Albert Bjorn. So Albert, um, Albert's got a really interesting story. He's around the same age as me. I think he's a few years younger than me. Um, he grew up in Sussex in the UK, uh, in England, southern England, and he's been living in Iceland for the past seven years. And what I really was quite interested about, um, again, keeping in theme with the the theme of the podcast this um, this uh, this um, season. Um, was how somebody from one very distinct part of a of, of folk landscape moves to another very distinct folk landscape, um, all within Europe still, and, and what that experience was like for him. So Albert, um, like I said, is originally from Sussex, um, and he has spent the past seven years um, learning Icelandic, really involving himself, ingratiating himself, becoming Icelandic. And uh, so I was really curious to, uh, to sit down and talk with him. We had a wonderful chat. Um, the sound audio quality on my end isn't as great, but his end was perfect. And I actually managed to get him while he was um, on a summer vacation in uh, Gotland in uh, Sweden. So that was really, really cool. So um, I was trying to get plant magic. It came out last year, um, I believe last year or earlier in the year. And um, it's... Uh, I'll be honest with you, plant magic is not something that I, I generally have a lot of experience with, mainly because I've always been focused on spirits or gods, uh, story and, and things like that, as opposed to plants and working with plants. That is changing um, the more I actually uh, get to meet some of the writers and other authors um, whose works, like Kobe Michael, for example, is uh, plant, uh, plant magic and, and working with plant spirits. So when I picked this one up, what I really, really was interested in is um, how different it was from some of the other plant herbal books out there. What made this book particularly Icelandic? Like what, 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 what could be spoken of? Um, and I wasn't, I, I'll be honest with you, I was not um, going in with any kind of presuppositions because I just, it, it's just a sphere I don't know. So I was pleasantly surprised when I received this book to see that it isn't just a herbal book. It isn't just a listing of Icelandic herbs and, and, and magical uses of them. Um, what you have here is a whole slice of the Icelandic culture. And what you have is Icelandic culture as it is now, as it was 100 years ago, as it was 500 years ago, um, not just the ancient Norse, which a lot of, I would say, North American written books tend to be um, focused on when it comes to Icelandic um, culture and Scandinavian culture is so much emphasis is placed on the ancient Norse that the missing piece is the Christian aspect and the medieval aspect all the way through and the early modern. So um, the book itself is about how many pages is this? It's almost 300 pages. Um, he, I think it would be, I think it would be ideal for you to um, listen to what the uh, flow of it is. So uh, the content, so he starts with an introduction, um, he talks about um, kind of the animistic approach and how animism comes into the folk culture. Um, he talks about things to consider, things to consider when it comes to foraging, when it comes to um, uh, cultural appropriation he speaks about in here too. He talks about connections. One of the biggest pieces out of this that I really loved is He's very eager to um, connect the local Icelandic plants with the same species that grow in England, 
or Scotland or, or Ireland or Wales and other parts of Scandinavia. He makes a great deal of effort in kind of showing you not just the the indigenous Icelandic plants that only grow in Iceland, because it's it's a far distance away, right? It's an, it's um, a physical isolate from the rest of Europe, but also those plants that are uh, found in other cultures in Northern Europe. And he talks about those cultural connections. He talks about um, the fact that um, so many Icelanders have Irish ancestry because of, this, of the sheer number of Iceland uh, of um, of, uh, of Irish um, either slaves or Irish um, uh, uh, family that were brought over. Um, the history of that, of course, the, the, the Vikings, the Norse, were, had colonies all over the North Sea, and, um, and many of them who came from Dublin. Dublin is originally in, in Ireland. Dublin was uh, started as a Viking kind of trading post or settlement, and um, many of the individuals took their wives who were Irish um, to Iceland, and and so I think it's something like two in five Icelanders have Irish uh, Irish background. Like this is from like a thousand years ago, but it's still that connection, right? Um, so he he gives that context. He he speaks about the Christian context of Iceland, how that isolation has also created um, a really powerful fusion between the kind of the pre pagan, uh, the pre Christian, and the Christian. And then he goes into, I'll just bring up the uh, introduction page here of contents, and then he talks about the actual um, herbs themselves. He talks about the plants, he talks about the fungi, because fungi is, uh, uh, there's a, a huge number of funguses and, and mushrooms that grow on Iceland. Um, and then he goes on, it, it really builds off of itself, so I really appreciate the, the flow of it. He then talks about some of the recipes, the ways that these plants are used, some of the traditional, um, uh, the, the traditional um, uh, magical spells and uses in the folk culture. And he doesn't just speak about magic, he talks about their use in folk custom and, and in the folk landscape. Um, he also talks about um, a lot of traditions that you would find in other parts of Northern Europe, and he talks about the similarities and um, and it's very important. He, he importantly grounds it back into Icelandic culture, so um, so you can see the parallels, you can see the connections. He also talks. Uh, he he does a great job, I think, in um, contrasting the two. So one of the examples he gives is, and he talks about this in the uh, in the interview that we have, is he he grew up with, um, and I believe it was. Was it Parsers? He grew up with a plant in Sussex that is also found in Scandinavia and also found in Iceland too. And he talks about how the the the, the culture in Sussex takes up that particular plant and then how in Iceland it's slightly different because of the context of that, but also that there's a similarity. And in, in, in relating to the spirit of the plant, he talks, and other, other guests, um, Kobe Michael talked about this as well, he talked about how um, you have various kind of uh, concentric circles of, 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 of spirit. So I, I believe in the interview he was speaking about, he was talking about how you, know, you have that local population and then you have the spirit of the plant in general, but each local population will have that different manifestation, um, which are again, very animistic pr approach. I think there's a, there's a, I mean, it's a huge book. There's so much in this. Um, and I didn't, I, this is not a book that I would have naturally picked up off the shelf, mainly because herbalism isn't my thing. But it's books like these that really help me to understand how herbalism and, and working with plants and working with plant spirits um, is, is such a vital, important part of, of, of witchcraft and folk tradition. Um, he talks about, so in the forward here, is it the forward or the introduction? Um, let's talk about the introduction here. It says, working with local plant spirits is, in my opinion, something all magical practitioners should be doing. Your local spirits run that spirit ecology in which you live and operate. Working with plants and materia in your own environment, ideally what you've spent time and energy collecting and connecting with, brings a deeper kinship with your surroundings and a better chance of developing relationships with these plants. 
that's the start of the book and it's a fantastic start of the book because it really gives us a sense of which way he's going with this what i love is the ethical quality of this book he talks about the laws that exist in Iceland. There is a, a, a listing, it's somewhere in here, but he talks about there's a, a particular listing from the government website where um, it is a, a, a illegal to pick protected species. It is illegal to pick species at certain times of year because they're protected and, um, and, and even as tourists, um, you, you will be prosecuted. He talks about the ethics of foraging. He talks about what it's like to relate to the the the, uh, the landscape um, and the plant spirits and also the other spirits on the landscape while you're foraging. He talks about the elves. He talks about some of the um, some of the other folk figures in the landscape and how they connect in with the uh, with the with the plants he's talking about. I also love that he's because he's actually grounded in, in the in the culture because he's learning Icelandic. He's been over there for so long now. Um, his partner is Icelandic. Um, he 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 talks about the culture as it is now, and not some airy fairy kind of ancient, you know, past that is doesn't exist anymore. He talks about the role of Christianity in the folk culture, the use of Christianity in that folk religion and that folk um, uh, magical practice. Um, and he also talks about um, the, the various ways that uh, Christianity has added to the island and the, way that, the ways that Christianity, those folk Christian traditions, relate with then the stories of Odin and Frigga and the, and the ancient uh, pagan deities, right? So I really appreciate this slice of the Icelandic culture um, in this book as, as, as being a living tradition. And he, he shows that throughout the book. He talks about it as a living tradition. And I think that a, what can often be a tendency to think about is some of these older European cultures, um, isolated European cultures sometimes, um, as being idyllic and magical and not real. Right, I think, and I speak here as a North American who has roots and whose background is European. We often see this with um, the Celtic in the British Isles, right, and the Irish Isles. There can be a fetishization of these cultures and these living cultures, and a real shock when you people from North America arrive and go on holiday to these places and see that it is a living culture still, right? Um, that people don't just stand around thinking about the ancient past all the time they're living and they're doing and they're and they're thriving right so all in all i really enjoyed this book i really enjoyed having uh, albert on and i look forward to sharing that interview with you um, i believe that comes out in like early october or late september but in the meantime go and check out this crossed crow books um out of chicago um go and check out um albert's uh, social media on instagram he's sussex peller and i'll put that down in the link um and uh he's always constantly posting stuff on online there are a couple of cool interviews with him as well of course the one i did with him there's a couple of others um but uh but for me i really i really liked this book um and i liked it not because of my intention to actually go and practice Icelandic magic, um, but because it gave me inspiration for how I could look at my own landscape. You know, I'm moving back to the UK next year. I figured out kind of vaguely what part of the UK I'm moving to and that landscape, which is close to home for me. Um, how can I then relate to my own landscape? How can I, as somebody who's moving back to a place I come from but have been away for so long, how can I start to build that relationship? There's a lot of, um, a lot of really handy advice in this. Now, if you are interested in, um, in uh, Icelandic magic or, or kind of that Norse uh, uh, Scandinavian magic, he talks about how there are cognate, um, uh, cognate uh, uh, traditions in other parts of Scandinavia, in other parts of Northern Europe. So it's um, it's it really a much broader view. And I know that uh, based on our private conversation that he's working on developing some other things that um, that is, is, is broader and, and, and connecting in with that. So uh, go and check out the book again, Icelandic Plant Magic, Folk Herbalism of the North by Albert Bjorn. Thank you again and have a great rest of the week.